And everybody said, I welcome everyone to our workers training tonight in Jesus' name. Wonderful to see you. I said it's wonderful to see you. That nothing physical, nothing is right here. I've seen that you're from coming. And I pray that your coming will not be in vain in Jesus' name. The Lord will bless you. And the Lord will use what you are hearing to be a blessing to other people too. Amen. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for our workers' training. Thank you for your people. Thank you for the impact of the word in every life. We're asking tonight that to touch every life, turn us around, and make us new ministers of the new covenant in Jesus' name. We're asking, Lord, that you touch everyone, turn everyone's life around, and help us to be better workers and better leaders and better ministers in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Do everything that has to be done so that our life will bring greater glory, more glory to your life, and progress to the work of God in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. We're coming to First John chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 7. First John chapter 2. We're reading from verse 7. It says, Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye add from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you. Because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. You'll see the use of the two words, old and new. Old commandment, new commandment. Old refers to what we learned before, what we had known before. What our fathers, our forefathers in the faith have known before. It refers to the Old Covenant and the Old Testament. And now it talks about the New, the New Commandment, the New Covenant, the New Lifestyle, and the New Ministry. And as it uses both the Old and the New, look at what he's saying. He's saying again in verse 8, a new commandment I write unto you. It says it's still Old, the Old Commandment the old uh, precepts and the old desires and demands of the Lord. And yet, even though it is old, it becomes new because the darkness is passed away and a new light now shines. We're looking at the word of God tonight on building the new on the old foundation. Building the new on the old foundation. There are many people that do not understand and they do not know how to make use of the old covenant, the old commandment, and the old understanding of the teaching of the word of God. They totally abandon the Old Testament. And you see, what good can we have in that? We're now in the New Testament. In their own understanding, the old contradicts the new. In their own understanding, the new covers up and cancels the old. But the Lord says, no, everything is the word of God. The Old Testament is the word of God, and it gives us a foundation. And we need to build on that old foundation the new ministry, the new man and the new minister, and the new person the Lord wants to make out of every one of us. We're coming to Romans chapter 13. In Romans chapter 13, uh, we're looking at the old covenant, at the old commandment, and yet, these are New Testament people, and the New Testament people are being told, don't throw away the old, 
Don't cancel the old and don't bury the old and don't think that you can do away with the old. I'm reading from Romans chapter 13 and we're looking at it from verse 8. Oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. It's talking about the new understanding and the new covenant and the new commitment and the new consecration. That will make sure that you don't owe any man, but you love one another. And then it goes to the old and it says, For he that loveth another, for has fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery from the Old Testament, and thou shalt not kill from the Old Testament, and thou shalt not steal from the Old Testament, and thou shalt not bear false witness from the Old Testament, and thou shalt not covet whatever belongs to other people from the Old Covenant, and if there be any other commandment that you have read about, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It's saying, Love your neighbor as yourself, that's still new. That's New Testament, but it's building the new upon the old. Look at verse 10. Love walketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And it says, and that knowing that the time, that now it is high time, and that you awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is fast spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. You see, we're in the New Testament now. And we have the New Covenant now. Those of us who are in the New Covenant and the New Testament, let us cast off. The works of darkness don't have any excuse. Thou shalt not steal, Old Testament. Thou shalt not commit adultery, Old Testament. Thou shalt not uh, bear false witness, Old Testament. But now when the New Testament and is the age of grace, and therefore we can do anything, it says no. You are building the new on the old. And it says, so cast up the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly. New Testament believers, let us walk honestly as in the day. Not in rioting and drunkenness. Not in chambering and wantonness. No, not in strife. Or and envying, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Building the new on the old foundation. We're coming to Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6. And we're reading from verse 16, Jeremiah chapter 6. And we're reading from verse 16. The old, the old is there. And yet you are building a new life, a new ministry, a new loyalty, a new commitment. Build it on the word of God. In Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16, it says, Thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see. And ask for the old paths, where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. It says, as for the old paths, as for the old way, as for everything the Lord had given us from the very beginning, and then now you as a New Testament believer, you stand in the way, and you see, and you ask, what are the old paths? So you are not following a kind of psychedelic religion, a kind of modernistic religion, a kind of new day religion that says, no, we don't walk by the word of God. We don't walk by the Old Testament. We don't walk by the commandments. So it says, no, you must build the new on the old. And it says, walk it therein, and you'll find rest for your soul. We're coming to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew 
chapter 22, and I'm reading from verse 37. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. In verse 37, it says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great command. The Lord Jesus summarized the Old Testament, the first part of the covenants, is summarized into those words that you will love the Lord your God, commandments 1, 2, 3, and 4. That the implication is, the summary is, the conclusion is, you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, no reservation, with all your soul and uh, nothing that you are, you know, setting aside, and with all your mind that you may live. Look at verse 38. There is the force and the great command. Verse 39, the second part of the law, the second part of those Ten Commandments, 6, 7, um, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. It said, The second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and all the prophets. As I said, the message tonight is building the new on the old foundation. Three, th three points we are thinking about. Number one, preserving the old foundation for the new building. The new building in the new covenant, the new building in the new testament, the new building in the new dispensation, that new building you know, were built on the preservation of the old foundation, preserving the old foundation for the new building. Point number two, possessing the old time phase for new battles. What battles to fight? And we have the conflicts we need to resolve. And we have things we need to go through. It's all by faith. And that faith is the same old time faith of the people that have gone before possessing the old time faith for our new battles. Point number three, persevering with original faithfulness. The same original faithfulness of people of old. The same faithfulness they had. That same faithfulness we ought to have. Persevering with original faithfulness for a new breakthrough. In this new year, breakthrough for you. This year, 2020 vision, I said breakthrough for you. But there must be that old time original faithfulness of the people of old must have the same thing in our lives. And I pray that the old foundation you will preserve. The old time faith you will possess. And the original faithfulness you will persevere in in Jesus' name. We are coming to Psalm 11. Psalm 11 as we are building you are building the lives of other people as we are building. You are building in the families of other people and your own family too. As we are building, you are building in on the future, the future of other people. But there must be a foundation. Without a foundation, the building will collapse. Without a foundation, they're just preaching and teaching and praying and ministering. Without a foundation, everything will collapse. We're looking at Psalm 11 verse 3. Psalm 11 verse 3, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If you, you know, you are working for the Lord, but you've forgotten the foundation. You are, pray, you are praying to the Lord, but you have forgotten the foundation. You are claiming the promises of God, but you have forgotten the foundation. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Luke chapter 6. In Luke chapter 6, we're reading from verse 46. Luke chapter 6, we're reading from verse 46. Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Here are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, telling us and showing us the importance of foundation. 
in the work we do, the importance of salvation, of uh, foundation. In the life you live, the importance of foundation. In the ministry that you uh, minister to other people, the importance and the very essence of foundation. Luke chapter 6, verse 46, and why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say, whosoever cometh to me, and heareth my sins, and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. Verse 48, it's like a man which built an house, and dig deep, and laid the foundation on a rock. Is building, but before the building is not in a hurry. I don't have time for foundation. I need to get this building up very quickly. And because of that, it doesn't have foundation. It says, no, that when you are building, you're building a house that will last. You're building a sanctuary that will last. You're building a family, a life, a ministry that will last, that will stand. You must dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, and the streams beat vehemently upon that house, and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not, he hears the word of God, and he does not do it. He hears the word of God, and he does not obey. He hears the word of God, and he says, you know, God will do whatever he wants to do. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to, you know, have any foundation. I just uh, keep on uh, doing what I'm doing, and there is no foundation to his life. There's no foundation to his family. There's no foundation to his ministry. There's no foundation to the work he says he's doing for the Lord. In verse 49, but he that hears and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth without a foundation. Without a foundation, he built uh, the house on the earth, upon the sand, and against uh, which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell. Every house without foundation will fall. Every church without foundation will fall. Every ministry without foundation will fall. Every teaching without foundation, preaching without foundation, everything will fall and collapse eventually. It says immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. I pray that your work for the Lord will not collapse. Your work for the Lord will stand and remain firm to the very end in Jesus' name. Now, the foundation was the foundation of ministry as we're, as we're building this new ministry. And as we're working for the Lord and serving the Lord, what's the foundation? Number one, the foundation of repentance. The foundation of repentance. Can I show you that is the old foundation, old foundation. We're building the new on the old foundation. Look at Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18. Look at the repentance of the old foundation. Some people think repentance is a new thing. They never had that before. And they are wondering, repent, repent. Is that, you know, is that necessary? Look at it yourself. In Ezekiel chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 30. In verse 30, it says, Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent, old foundation, repent. That's in the old foundation. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. Don't just confess some and keep others. Don't just expose some and embrace others. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, everything whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure 
in the death of him that dies, says the Lord God, wherefore turn yourselves and leave him. As you come to the New Testament, is that repentance still there? Remember, the new has come, but the new is not abandoning the old. In the old, we're told, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. Look at the New Testament now in Second Peter chapter 3. We're reading from verse 9. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering towards what look at this look at this not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance that all should come to repentance we're building the new ministry and the new uh, edifice on the old foundation of repentance number two now Restore. Number one, repent. It's in the old, it's in the new. Number two, restore. It's in the old, it's also in the new. And you cannot say, well, we're now in the New Testament. We abandoned the old. We don't think of the old anymore. Everything is now new, new, new. It tells us in Exodus chapter 21. Exodus. I'm reading from chapter 22, rather. Exodus chapter 22. We're reading from verse 1. If a man shall steal an ox, or a sheep, and kill it, or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox, and four sheep for a sheep. Look at verse 5. If a man shall cause a field, a vineyard to be eaten and shall put in his uh, in his beast and shall feed in another man's field of the best of his own field and of the best of his own vineyard shall he make restitution old testament but remember that's not given to them hanging in the air it's at the foundation Repent, foundation, restore, foundation, it's at the foundation. It tells us in Philemon, has only one chapter, Philemon, and I'm reading there from verse 17. Philemon, we're reading from verse 17. It tells us in verse 17, if thou count me therefore a partner, Paul the Apostle writing to Philemon, Receive him as myself. If he has wronged thee or owes thee aught, put that on my account. I know he has to make restitution. If he cannot make the restitution, I will do it on his behalf. I, verse 19, I, Paul, have written it with my own hand. I will repay it. If he owes you anything, I'll repay that. We're not going to gloss over that. We're not going to sweep that under the carpet. He will restore. And that's what Zacchaeus said. Lord, half of my good I give to the poor. And if I've taken anything by wrong accusation from any man, I restore him fourfold. It's at the foundation. And the ministry we're building, you know, it's new, but we're building on the old foundation. Number three, Believe, believe. As you come to the Lord, repentance, that's the first step. Restitution, that's what the Lord has commanded. But now you have to believe so that you can have the righteousness of God and you can have uh, the salvation of the Lord. We're coming to Genesis at the foundation. Genesis chapter 15, and we're reading from verse 6. Genesis chapter 15, we're reading from verse 6. It tells us in verse 6, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. You see that? Old Testament, the foundation, you repent, you restore, you believe. And as you believe in the Lord, the Lord says he'll grant you righteousness. Come to Romans, the new now. We're looking at the old 
We're looking at the new. In the New Testament, in Romans chapter 4, reading here from verse 3. In Romans chapter 4, verse 3, for what says the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Look at verse 22 of that same chapter. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Verse 23. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him but for us also look at that look at that in the foundation of the old testament you must believe you repent you restore and you believe and now as you come to the new covenant the new testament it said but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up jesus our lord from the dead who was delivered for our offenses and raised and was raised again for our justification at number four is to obey you see when you become a child of god then the word of god is coming to you and you obey every time the word of god has come i'm a child of god that's my father talking that's my savior commanding that's the holy ghost reminding me and the father the son and the holy ghost the the, the trinity now leads me to a life of obedience that's what was required in the old covenant and this is what is still required in the new covenant we're coming to exodus exodus chapter exodus chapter 19 and i'm reading here from verse 5 exodus chapter 19 verse 5 old foundation obedience old foundation loyalty to the word of god old foundation compliance submission to the word of god exodus chapter 19 verse 5 now therefore if you will obey my voice indeed old testament obey the word comes to you. There is nothing else to do but to obey. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. He wants obedience to his word. I, but when you come to the new covenant, the new testament, don't we kind of shed off obedience? Is it still necessary to be obedient unto the Lord? Let's look at Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to be God rather than men. We ought to be God rather than men. And is the one going to judge us on the final day? What's the Lord telling us? The Lord is saying, Old Testament, repent. New Testament, repent. Old Testament, restore. New Testament, restore. Old Testament, believe. New Testament, believe. Old Testament, obey. New Testament, obey. Number five, Old Testament, sin not, sin not. You have come to know the Lord. You are a child of God now. Your life is to be glorifying unto the Lord. Sinning will not be taking place anymore. He gives you grace so that you will not continue in sin. We're looking at Psalm 4, Psalm 4, verses 3 and 4. Psalm 4, verses 3 and 4. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. He will answer your prayer. Okay, he will answer my prayer. Look at verse 4. Stand in awe and sin not. Stand in awe. Stand in reverence of God, stand in obedience to God, and stand in the reverential fear of God, stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. 
Old Testament, seen not. By word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Look at the New Testament. We're looking at John chapter 5, verse 14. New Testament now, John chapter 5, and we're reading from verse 14. See what Jesus said. It tells us in verse 14, it says, um, After what Jesus findeth him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, see no more. New Testament, sin no more. New Testament, sin no more. Lest a worse thing come unto thee. We're looking at John chapter 8, verse 11. John chapter 8, verse 11. She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. You see that New Testament now is still repeating the same thing that we have learned in the Old Testament. You have repented, you have restored, you have believed, you have been the Lord. The consequence in your life is that grace is at work in your life. And you sin not. In First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 34. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 34. A way to righteousness and sin not. Awake to righteousness and sin not. It's telling us in another way, be holy. Be holy. Welcome to Leviticus, Old Covenant, Old Testament, Old Demand of the Lord. Leviticus chapter 20. We're reading from verses 7 and 8. Leviticus chapter 20. And we're reading from verses 7 and 8. He wants you to be holy. He wants me to be holy. Look at it, chapter 22, Leviticus verse 7. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy. That's not a suggestion. It's a commandment of the Lord. The Almighty never makes suggestions. Almighty God, he never gives you a suggestion. Would you like to do this? Won't it be good if you did it like this? No. Everything he gives is commandment. Be ye holy, for I am holy, says the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. In the Old Testament, holiness and sanctification. Let's come to the New Testament now in First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 14. First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 14. It says in verse 14, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to your former laws in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Uh, you see what the Lord is telling us? It's in the old, that's the foundation. And as we're building the Christian life, and we're building the Christian ministry, and we're building the work we're doing on the foundation of the old, we don't uh, say, well, that's the Old Testament, be holy. It's in the New Testament, too. That's in the Old Testament, uh, obey my word. It's in the New Testament, too. It tells us, uh, number seven now, to love, to love. It's telling us in Leviticus chapter 19. Leviticus chapter 19, we're reading from verse 17. Leviticus 19, and we're reading from verse 17. It says in verse 17, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart, old covenant, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. You know, he's sinning. Are you piling the sin on him? Uh huh. You did that uh, last uh, July. You did that uh, last uh, September. You did that in December. You did it in January. He says, Don't do that. Don't suffer sin upon him. Don't 
pile of sin upon him, tell him, rebuke him, correct him. Look at verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge. Old Testament. Thou shalt not bear any grudge against your wife, against your husband, against your brother, against your sister, against your neighbor. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord, not I was the Lord. Now things have changed. You don't have to love your neighbor anymore. No, not I will be the Lord in the future. So when you get to heaven, your love will be perfect. Your love one. He said, now, at this very time, I am the Lord your God. You love your neighbor as yourself. Old Testament. Now we come to the New Testament in Matthew chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 22. The old and the new. The old and the new. In Matthew chapter 22, it tells us here in verse 39. Matthew chapter 22, reading from verse 39. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The Lord is uh, reminding us that as we're building a ministry, as we're building the church, as we're building the family, as we're building our lives, as we're building the work of the Lord, as we're serving the Lord, we build the new upon the old foundation. Point number two now, possessing the old time faith, our new battles. Here we're facing battles today. We're facing battle against sin, against temptation, against trial, battles against the world, battles against the devil, battles against the flesh. In all the battles we face, if we're going to win, and thank God we're going to win. Thank God I'm going to win. You'll win in Jesus' name. But you know, if we're going to win the battle, it's going to be on the basis of faith. And people think, ah, oh, faith. It was not, uh, I was uh, listening to a preacher many years ago, and then he said, you know, in the Old Testament, the people did not have faith. That Old Testament people, no faith, well, they had faith, because it said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Was trusting, not faith. It says, if Abraham believed the Lord, it was counted to him for righteousness. Was believing the Lord, that's faith. They had faith. We're coming to the old time faith. And we must have that for new battles. If we're going to win in any battle, you want to possess the old time faith. We're coming to Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2, I'm reading here from verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2, look at verse 4. It says in verse 4, Behold, his soul which is lifted up in him, which is lifted up, is not right in him. What does that mean? The soul that is lifted up. I can live without sin by myself. I can live a righteous life by myself. I can overcome every battle by myself. I can overcome every challenge by myself. I have boldness, I have courage, and I can lead a life that is victorious by myself. It says, Behold, a soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Look at the conclusion. But the just shall live by his faith. Old Testament, that's the foundation. That's the foundation, and we build on that phase of the Old Testament. The just shall live by faith. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 10. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Old New Testament now. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. New Testament. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, not depending upon the Lord anymore, I can fend for myself, I can take care of myself, I can protect myself, 
I can preserve myself. I can be victorious by myself. And the soul is lifted up again. He says, no. Now the jaw shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. I will not draw back. I said I will not draw back. Lagos boys has been taken away. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. You see that is the same trusting the Lord. He wants us to keep on trusting the Lord so that we are not relying on the arm of flesh. We are coming to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7. By faith Noah being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an act to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith, by faith Noah. Noah, is that an Old Testament character or New Testament character? Church, I want to hear have an answer. Old Testament character, faith was necessary. The Lord told him that it had never rained. There had never been any drop of rain at that time. And yet God said, a deluge is coming. A flood is coming. Rain is coming. It will totally submerge all the houses and all the people of the world. Therefore, build an ark. And he feared, and he did what the Lord told him to do. Look at Matthew. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. We're reading from verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. It's still going to require faith. As the days of Noah, when God told him it's going to rain, and they had never seen rain, and yet Noah moved by faith. Jesus said, For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, took them all away. They were living their lives. Business was the order of the day, planting and reaping, marrying, giving in marriage, social things, eating and drinking. How about this flood that is coming? I don't think anything like that will happen. We've never seen rain. How can it rain? How can rain uh, fall so much? It will submerge everything. You believe that? You are like Uncle Noah, a lone ranger, who is believing this eccentric thing that no other person believes. That's what they did. And Jesus said, in the latter part of that verse 39, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The people who are going to escape the tribulation, the great tribulation, if they go, anyone that is going to escape the judgment that is to come must have the same face of Noah and still believe, even though he cannot see any sign of that judgment coming. Of course, you can see the sign, it's everywhere. Look at Luke chapter 18, verse 8. Luke chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 8. The Lord is assuring us that at the time when Christ shall come, there will be, like many people will be like the time of Noah, and only the minority will be like uh, Noah, the man of faith and, and righteousness. In uh, Luke chapter 18, verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, when the days will be like the days of Noah, days of unbelief, days of doubting, days of carelessness, days of eating and drinking, days of marriage and pleasure, 
days of uh, merriment, when the Lord shall come, shall he find faith on the earth? If we're going to escape the coming judgment, we must have the same old time faith that the people had. We're coming to chapter 11 of um, Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. And we're reading from verse 8. Hebrews 11. Reading from verse 8. Here it tells us in verse 8 of Hebrews 11. It says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive as an inheritance, obeyed. God called him, and the Lord said, Come out of your community, come out of idolatry, come out of all the evil things in society. He obeyed, and then it says, he, as he obeyed, he went out, not knowing whither he went. He went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, and heirs who are heirs with him of the same promise. Why did he do that? How could he do that? When the Lord called him and he had not known where he was going. Verse 10, for he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. His mind was not on the temporary land, the land of Canaan. His mind was not on earthly things. He was looking for a city which has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. How about us today? Have we received any such commandment? Come out like Abraham received. And if we have obeyed, how have we obeyed by faith? Look at first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them. The same commandment God gave to Abraham. Come out from among them. Be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. Uh, have you seen people who have had the commandment of the Lord like Abraham had come out of the community, of the pollution, of the practices, of the evil, of the transgressions, of the crimes in society? Come out. And they're still lingering. And they're dilly-dallying. And they're delaying. But in the case of Abraham, by faith, it came out. And if we're going to have the same inheritance that Abraham had, as the Lord had said to us, come out, and he told him, come out, we we'll obey him. And it says, wherefore come out from among them, and be separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. The faith to obey the Lord will give unto us in Jesus' name. There are many people who say they have, you know, come out of the world. Whenever they buy a new car, they say they want to celebrate like the people of the world. They still like the people of the world. They have not come out or they have got married. They're going to do their wedding exactly. They are the people of the world and have all this worldly music and all that. And they say they are members of the Bible believing church. No, they are not. No, they are not. There are people that uh, when they have got a new certificate, they want to do it like all the people of the world. That's not coming out. When you come out, you do like Abraham. You come out of the practices. You come out of the pollutions. And you come out of all the indignities of those people. We're looking at Revelation chapter 18. And I'm reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 18. We're reading from verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven. 
a voice from heaven, the voice of God from heaven. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. The same commandment given to Abraham, the same commandment is given to us, and it says, Come out. Old Testament, come out. New Testament, come out. And it takes the same faith, the same old time faith to do that. I pray that if you are still lingering and you are still hanging around things of the world, you will come out clear and clean in Jesus' name. I said you will come out plain and real in Jesus' name. We will not be one leg in the world and one leg in the kingdom. It's not possible. It's not possible. You cannot be in Egypt and in Israel all at the same time. One leg here, one leg over here, drinking what they are drinking, smoking what they are smoking, uh, telling the jokes they are telling, wearing what they are wearing, and uh, you know, celebrating what they are celebrating, and routing like they are routing, and doing everything like they are doing it. If you're a Christian, you obey the commandments of the Lord, come out, and as you come out by faith, the Lord will honor your faith and receive you in Jesus' name. We're coming to Hebrews again, chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, and I'm reading here from verse 24. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was called, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. You understand what that means? There are people who are born into a royal family, idolatrous family, they are born into the seat of uh, politics, they are born into places that, you know, just call it and you have it, just claim it and you have it, and the money is there, the riches are there, the opportunities are there, and, uh, you know, their parents are saying, uh, as a child in this family, whatever you need any time, just, just tell us and you are going to have. The only thing is, you must also follow the idol of the family. You must follow the religion of the family. Of the family. You must follow the trade of the family. Well, in the case of Moses, by faith, Moses, when he was called to, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction, choosing rather to suffer poverty, choosing rather to suffer persecution, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Uh, you know, there are people that will say, I'm born again, I'm a child of God, I'm part of the people of God. But you know what? I cannot, uh, you know, stay totally with the church because it will affect my business. I cannot say totally what the church, I know what the church is teaching. If I were not in my position, if I were not in riches and wealth like this, if I did not have the connections I have and, they, and they're watching me, if I go this way to say, ah, watch it, that's the life. And then if I go this way, watch it, that's holiness. If I go this way, watch it, and that one is a Bible. And if you bring that here, you're not going to keep our contact. We're going to take all this from you. So they are here, they are there, they are here, they are there. But you know, Moses, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin of uh, the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith they forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, but he endured as seeing him who is invisible. He endured as seeing him who is invisible. Old Testament Moses. Let's look at the New Testament now in Philippians chapter 3. In Philippians chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 7. Philippians chapter 3. 
the same face that the people of old had, the same face the people of the New Testament also must have. It tells us in Philippians chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 7, but what things were gain unto me, thus I counted laws for Christ, like Moses. What things were gained to me if nothing is going to be wound around my feet and then it will make me to trip and to fall? I remove that. If that thing is going to hinder me from running the race that I set before me, I throw that thing away. Whatever there, riches or wealth, if it is coming from a direction, if it's coming from a person that is going to compel me and say, look at it now, I'm feeding you. Look at it, I'm clothing you. Look at it, I'm financing you. Look at it, I'm sponsoring you. And because I finance you, because I sponsor you, you must follow my religion. How can you be getting my money? And then I say that this is the way I'm going. And say, no, you are going to go to church. If you continue like that, all that has been coming to you will stop. Okay, let it stop. But what things that were gained to me, those I counted, uh, laws for Christ. There are some people that do not know where to draw the line. You say you have made restitution as a woman, and you are not of that man anymore. But the man says, okay, if that's your religion, if that is, uh, you know, how you want to live your life, and then whenever you need house strength or you need anything, then you go to him, uh, and you are getting money. And the man is, ah, but you say you are following Christ now. If you are following Christ, are you still coming to me? Why didn't Christ give you the house rent? Uh, don't talk like that. After all, we were together before. Okay, have this. And as you have that, it says, uh, by the way, before you go, come on here. Are you just going to get everything free like that? I'm going to deal with you as, you know, when I was your husband. And then you say, eh, okay, okay, eh, but you know I'm a Christian now, but you know I've left. If you have left, what are you doing there? You're looking the things that were gained unto you. You don't want to suffer affliction. You don't want to suffer persecution. You don't want to suffer any predicament at all. But Paul the Apostle said, But what things were gained to me, those I counted laws for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but laws for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the laws of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ that I may win Christ anything that is going to hinder me from benefiting from Christ completely and totally and getting to heaven and living in heaven with Christ completely all those things I reject that's faith that's faith you have faith in the Lord let's come back now to Hebrews chapter 11 Hebrews chapter 11 the Old Testament Peter and the Old Testament people, when they caught away from sin, it was a clear cutting away. It's not like you cannot tell. Where did you go? Well, I go to the. I went to the house of my ex-husband. Where did you go? I went to visit my ex-wife. What are you doing together? What's happening there? And what mess are you still committing? Well, actually, you know. Uh, it's uh, difficult for me to remove my mind from her, to remove my mind from him. Uh huh. You have not caught up, and it is because of these earthly things you are still looking for. But you know, the old time faith, when those people caught up, they really caught up, and God took care of them. God will take care of you. I said, God will take care of you. If you're a Christian, be a Christian. If you made restitution, be clear. You have made restitution. If you have come out, be very clear. You have come out. Know that you are out and then you are in. You say good night and then you say good evening again. God forbid in our lives in Jesus' name. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 11 and I'm reading from verse 30. Hebrews chapter 11. I was reading from verse 30. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 30, it says, By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that perished, that believed not. 
when she received the spies with peace, but he did not, she did not perish because she received those spies with uh, what peace. Let's come to verse 30 now. In verse 30, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. After they were compassed about seven days. Every Jericho wall will fall in your life. But are you willing to walk by faith? By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. How did that happen? As said they were, as said they were with the, uh, with, around the walls of Jericho. And what it says is that the first day, go around only once, but don't talk. Don't say anything. Don't say, how will this happen? Don't say, has this happened before? Don't say, but the walls are still standing like they were standing. On the second day, go around, but say nothing. Can you do that? Can you do that after you have preached and you have uh, given the problem to the Lord and you know that this Jericho wall is going to fall down? Do you still go to Habali after that? Do you still go to a uh, one papa somewhere? Do you still go to one mama somewhere? Do you still go to somebody to rob your belly? Do you still go to here and there? Because even though you say you are praying and you are looking up to the Lord, you're still going here and there, but the second day and the third day and the fourth day and the fifth day and the sixth day, and they were not saying, but I don't see anything happening. I don't see, you know, Jericho wall falling down. On the seventh day, they went around seven times, and when Joshua said, shout, what are we going to shout about? The walls are still there. What are we going to shout about? The difficulty is still there. Your Jericho wall has fallen down. I said the Jericho walls are falling down. And they shouted, and those walls fell down. This year is going to be a glorious year. 2020 covenant of the Lord. This year is going to be a glorious year in Jesus' name. Jericho walls will fall down. All the paths of darkness will fall down. Anything that is harassing your life, everything will fall down in Jesus' name. Come to second, the uh, second Corinthians chapter ten. Second Corinthians chapter ten. I'm reading from verse three. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. And it says through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Every stronghold in your life is going to be pulled down casting down imaginations and every high thing that, exalt, that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity. They will not bring you to captivity. You will bring all those problems to captivity in Jesus' name. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. It has happened. It will happen. You walk by faith, you lay by faith, you are going to have the victory. I am going to have the victory. I am going to have the victory. I am going to have the victory. It is confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Galatians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 20. In verse 20 it says, I am crucified with Christ. You know, the old life is crucified with Christ. The old way of thinking is crucified with Christ. The old weakness is crucified with Christ. The old flesh that is looking for inordinate affection, that is looking for immoral pleasure, that old self is crucified. I am crucified with Christ. The old covetous is crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth. Where is Christ living now? Where is Christ living now? As Christ is living in you, victory is living in you. Power is living inside you. Authority is living inside you. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, it shall be done unto you in Jesus' name. It says, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the face of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He loved me and he gave himself for me. 
you are not lack in Jesus name number one preserving the old foundation for the new building number two possessing the old time faith for our new battles you are going to win you are going to conquer in every battle in Jesus name number three now persevering with original faithfulness for new breakthrough for a new breakthrough original faithfulness what kind of faithfulness are you going to have i said what kind of faithfulness are you going to have you know some people have counterfeit faithfulness some people have shallow faithfulness some people have superficial faithfulness some people have a kind of uh, fake uh, faithfulness but original for you i said original for you the, the kind of faithfulness they had in days gone by that's the kind of faithfulness i want to have and that's the kind of faithfulness i pray for you to have in jesus name look at numbers chapter 12 numbers chapter 12 and we're reading from verse 7 numbers chapter 12 verse 7 faithfulness faithfulness we have foundation old foundation we have faith, old time faith. We have faithfulness, old time, original faithfulness. We're looking at uh, Numbers chapter 12, verse 7. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. The Almighty God bore witness concerning him who is faithful in all my house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth even apparently and not in dark speeches and the similitude of the lord shall he behold wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant moses what had happened here is that aaron and miriam they spoke against moses well, they were very familiar with him. They were actually his uh, seniors in the same family. And uh, Aaron and Miriam, older than Moses. But God chose Moses. And uh, Moses was faithful to God. And he wasn't consulting them. Can I do this? Look at Moses. Miriam was saying to, you know, Aaron, he'll not even consult. He doesn't remember but that we're older than him. And he just takes this step and this, take this step and this step and that step. And in fact, if anything goes wrong, he'll say, Aaron, why did you do that? How could you do that? What's happening to him? This kind of Moses. But the man was faithful to God. You'll be faithful to God. I said, you'll be faithful to God. And he spoke against him. And then he was not defending himself. You know some people, they spent all their time on the pulpit. I know there's conspiracy there. I know there's opposition there. I know some of you people are talking against me. What's your problem? Let God take care of that. You'll not be defending yourself on the pulpit in Jesus' name. He kept on, he kept on. When you go to the house fellowship, uh -huh, why didn't you come the other time? You don't like me. Why didn't you come the other time? You don't appreciate me. I am the house fellowship leader here. Whether you like it or not, what's the problem with you? You'll not defend yourself anymore. I said you'll not defend yourself anymore. Moses just went on in original faithfulness. And God defended him. God will defend you. Your year of defense has come. Your year of protection has come. It will not be you wasting your time on the pulpit, wasting your, wasting your time in the house fellowship, wasting your time in the district. Defend yourself, defend yourself. I am clean, I am clear, I am this. Let God defend you. God can defend you better than you can defend yourself. Give me a good amen. amen. We have read the Old Testament and we have seen original faithfulness. Let's come to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and the stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. It's required in servants, in stewards, in workers, in preachers, in pastors, in leaders, in ministers, that a man, that a 
woman, be found faithful. You'll be faithful in Jesus' name. We're coming back to the Old Testament. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 30. 1 Samuel chapter 2. We're reading from verse 30. Wherefore, the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father shall walk before me forever. But now the Lord says that be far from me. The Lord had told Eli, you'll walk before me with your house generation after generation. You'll walk before me forever. Your priesthood will be forever. Your assignment will be forever. Everything you have will be forever. But he said, no, that be far from me. Why? Because he honored his sons. He honored his family. He honored his friends. He honored the people close to him more than he honored God. He set the word of God aside. He was not faithful. I pray you'll be faithful. I will remain faithful. Look at verse 35. And I will raise me up a faithful priest. I'm going to abandon Eli. I'm going to abandon all his uh, uh, people that are following after him. And then he says, I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. I'm not going to have somebody that will abandon what's in my heart, what's in my mind, and then his own will, his own mind, his own heart is what is going to follow. I'm going to reject them. I'm going to throw them aside. I'm going to abandon them. I'm not going to have anything to do with them. I, it's my work. It's my kingdom. It's my ministry. And they're my people. And I want somebody that will show them my will and show them my mind and show them my heart. I will raise up a faithful, a faithful priest, a faithful preacher, a faithful pastor, a faithful uh, declarer of the word of God. And I will build him a sure house and he shall walk before mine anointed forever. I pray that that uh, faithfulness will be in you and be in me and be in us all together in Jesus' name. Uh, look at this in uh, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter uh, 2, and I'm reading from verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, we're reading from verse 2. You know what the Lord is looking for? He's looking for faithfulness, original faithfulness, not fake not superficial, not make-believe a faithfulness, real, original faithfulness. We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, and the things which thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, Timothy, don't look for somebody who is only familiar with you. Look for faithful men. Don't look for people who are glib in talking. They can talk and talk and talk and they can brag, but they are not faithful. Set them aside, push them aside. Timothy, as you are going to uh, give opportunity and ministry and you are going to give the work to other people, you're looking for the people you will train, the people you will bring up, and they will do the work with you. Commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. That will be you, my brother. That will be you, my sister. You'll be faithful. I will be faithful. I will keep on being faithful. The Lord will keep us being faithful all the time throughout our days in Jesus' name. A greater amen now. In Second Chronicles chapter 19, Second Chronicles chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 7. Second Chronicles chapter 19, we're reading from verse 9, verse 9. Second Chronicles chapter 19, verse 9. And he charged them, saying, Thus shall ye do in the fear of the Lord faithfully. 
with a perfect heart, not with a wavering heart, with an undecided heart, not with a heart that is not totally sold out to God. They shall ye do in the fear of the Lord faithfully and with a perfect heart. And what cause soever shall come to you of your brethren that dwell in their cities between blood and blood, and you have to counsel between law and the commandments, and you have to advise them between statutes and judgments, ye shall even warn them that they trespass not against the Lord, and so wrath. Come, not come upon you and upon your brethren this due, and ye shall not transgress. And behold, Amariah, the chief priest, is over you in all matters of the Lord, and Zebadiah, the son of Ishmael, the ruler of the house of Judah, for all king's matters, also the Levites shall be officers before you. Deal courageously. When you are faithful, you are courageous. If you are fearful, you cannot be faithful. If you are timid, you cannot be faithful. If you are wondering, what will they say? You will not be faithful. If you are afraid, what will they do unto me? You will not be faithful. And if you are wondering what they are giving me, the help I'm receiving from them, will they continue to give me that help? If you are wondering like that, you'll not be faithful. But when your, the center of your thought, the center of your mind is God and God alone, you'll be courageous. I pray you'll be courageous. Deal courageously and the Lord shall be of the good. You remain faithful. We're looking at Psalm 101, original faithfulness, original faithfulness. That's what he wants from you. That's what he wants from me. Anytime, anytime and anywhere we are, and we're serving the Lord, faithfulness, old time faithfulness, original faithfulness, Old Testament faithfulness will carry it on to the new faithfulness. In Psalm 101, I'm reading from verse 6. Psalm 101, verse 6, my eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. We want a new uh, region of us yes. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. We well, want new state overseers to send here, to send there. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. We we'll want preachers who are going to preach in the coming program. We we'll want those who are going to lead seminars. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. We we'll want people for special assignment to do this and to do that. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land that they may dwell with me. He that walketh with a perfect, in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Verse 7, he that walketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He shall that walketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He's saying, I'll not bring so near to be familiar with me. I'll not bring so near to walk along with me. Well, what are you going to be? What are you going to do? Those are the people available. Because, you know, people are no more faithful nowadays. Uh, they will cut corners and they will cheat and they will do this and they cannot stay by some doctrine, by the whole Bible nowadays. So, see, these are the people you have. Why don't you make use of what you have? It says, He that walketh the seed shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not, shall not tarry in my sight. Give me a good amen over there. The Lord will help us. We are not going to, you know, surround ourselves with deceivers and liars. You know, you want to take decision. You cannot take good decisions on lying. You cannot take good decision on uh, deceit or deception. If the people around you are liars and you know they are the people to tell you this and tell you this and tell you that, and you are making decisions on the church, making decisions on your family, making decisions in the house fellowship, making decision in 
the ministry on the basis of deception and lie that God will not support that kind of ministry. I pray that God will not abandon you in your ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. We're coming to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. We're reading from verse 45. Faithfulness, original faithfulness. Faithfulness in little things and faithfulness in big things. Faithfulness to the word of God. Faithfulness to the will of God. Faithfulness to the leading direction of the Lord. It says in Matthew chapter 24 verse 45, Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Look at this. It's not saying wise like the worldly wise people. There's one worldly wise woman in the Old Testament, but she turned the word of God upside down and it brought, brought in Absalom. And through the worldly wisdom of that woman, eventually David got into trouble. The woman was not faithful. Wise, worldly wise, you'll not be worldly wise in Jesus' name. But you are faithful and you are wise. It says, who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord has made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season. To give them meat in due season. You know what? In our families, even though there is a you know, challenge or whatever, the housewife will try to get food to make sure that the household is well fed. Transportation is difficult. One way or the other, she will try to find food to feed the whole family. And, uh, you know, there is uh, something going out there in that corner, in that community. She's not going to use that as an excuse to make the household to be starving. The same thing with preachers who are feeding the church of God or the word of God. The same thing with our fellowship leaders who are feeding the house fellowship or the bread of life. The same thing with the men and the women who have the responsibility of feeding the people of God. They are going to say there is something going on on the street there. Therefore, we cannot go and feed the house fellowship. There's something going on, uh, you know, between us and the church location. Therefore, we cannot go to church uh, because of this and because of that. There is uh, what they call security, security, protection, no protection. There is uh, whatever and whatever. And they use that as excuse. And they're not going to feed the people of God. A real child of God is so committed. He has original faithfulness. You You'll have original faithfulness. I will have original faithfulness. And you are not going to use any excuse whatever. Uh, we cannot evangelize. We cannot win souls. We cannot lead us fellowship. We cannot have women fellowship. We cannot have this. We cannot have that. We cannot go to those young people. And we cannot feed them with the word of God. Be faithful. Be faithful. As the housewife is faithful. To make sure that she is feeding the household all the time. Whatever challenges there are. You too you'll be faithful in Jesus' name. I too, I'll be faithful in Jesus' name. That's where your wisdom lies. If you cannot have wisdom and use every ingenuity and use every possibility to still go out and feed the people of God and still do your evangelism, where is your wisdom? Where is your wisdom? It's the wisdom of God that lets us know, yes, I'm going to avoid trouble there. I'm going to avoid routing there. I'm going to avoid this situation over there. But I'll use my wisdom to remain faithful. You remain faithful in Jesus' name. Are the people still there? Look at verse 45. Begin who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord has made ruler over his uh, household, over his household to give them meat in due season. Look at verse 46. Blessed is that faithful servant. Blessed is that wise servant. Blessed is that committed servant. Blessed is that consecrated servant whom his Lord when he cometh, shall find so doing. When the Lord comes, he'll find me at my post. I said, when the Lord comes, he'll find me at my post. When the Lord comes, he'll find me at my post. He'll find you at your post in Jesus' name. You will not abandon the work of God. 
I thank God that you are here tonight. You'll always be here. You'll always be faithful in Jesus' name. If that road, if you cannot take that road, use your wisdom, take this other road. If you cannot come through that other street, use your wisdom, come through this other street. If this, if your vehicle will not pass through this bridge, the bridge is so weak, there's another bridge there, take another bridge. And that kind of wisdom will make us faithful all the time. And this work of the Lord will prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. We're looking at Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 17, and we're reading from verse 14. Revelation chapter 17, and we're reading from verse 14. Revelation chapter 17, we're reading from verse 14. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. I said the Lamb shall overcome them. Any war against your life, against your family, against your ministry, against your calling, against your appointment, the Lamb will overcome all that war in Jesus' name. For He is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. And they that are with Him are called and chosen. Tell me the final word. They that are with Him are called. You are called. He has called you to salvation. He has called you to sanctification. He has called you to service. He has called you to the work of God. And he has chosen you. They are chosen. Now you must complete the cycle. Called. Praise the Lord you are called. Chosen. Praise the Lord you are chosen. And now you must complete it every day, every moment, every opportunity, every time, every challenge, every, every place you minister, in church, in us fellowship, in evangelism, in soul winning, in every calling the Lord has given you. He called you. He has chosen you. You are going to be faithful. I will be faithful. The grace to be faithful the Lord will grant unto you. Preserving the old foundation. Don't allow the foundation to be destroyed. Preserving the old foundation for the new building. Possessing the old time faith our new battles and preserving with original faithfulness for a new breakthrough. Breakthrough for you. Breakthrough for me. Breakthrough in our lives. Breakthrough in our families. And the Lord will make the work to prosper in your hands this very year in Jesus' name. Vision 2020 will not fail in your life. Commission 2020 will not fail in your life. The prophecy of 2020 will not fail in your life. Faith, foundation, faithfulness, the work will prosper. Let's rise up now and really commit everything to the Lord in prayer. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, you're the one the Lord is looking for. He has called you. He has chosen you. You will be faithful. 